Hello, everybody. Welcome in. Busy day of news. We already covered the fact that the 49ers have fired their former defensive coordinator, Steve Wilkes, and now a lot of people are speculating who might come next for the 49ers. So I just want to give a bit of an overview because even Kyle Shanahan doesn't know at this point. He let Steve Wilkes know of his decision about an hour before he talked to us at noon. And now he's at a crossroads because he's got to decide if he's going to go internal, if he really just wants to take it back to the formula that worked for the 49ers prior to Steve Wilkes, or if he wants to go external because he doesn't believe that he has anybody who is fully groomed and fully ready for that defensive play calling job on the staff. And if he goes external, well, that'll be a similar trajectory and similar decision as the one to go to Steve Wilkes after D'Amico Ryans. Wilkes obviously wasn't part of the 49ers coaching family. They tried to integrate Wilkes and a different new philosophy with what they already did, but it obviously didn't work very well for the 49ers. It just wasn't a marriage that that looked like it was going to uh, produce the results that the 49ers wanted. It certainly didn't this season. Take a look. This should help you conceptualize the 49ers' defensive drop-off. This is expected points added per game, so this will give you an idea in very stark terms of the estimated impact of the 49ers' defense per game. 2023, the Defense provided 3.3 expected points per game. That was a drop-off from 2022 when they ranked number one in the NFL, a plus 6.8 points per game. So 3.5 points per game worse by the estimation of the analytics. And in a league of tight margins, the 49ers literally just played a Super Bowl that was tied after regulation, losing 3.5 points per game, mainly due to the run defense, which was ranked number 26 a year after it was ranked number two, losing those 3.5 points is really damaging and is the analytical indicator that this didn't work out with Steve Wilkes. It was a philosophical thing. Steve Wilkes brought in a DB-oriented background. Meanwhile, the 49ers, they'd been used to a background of a linebacker, really, or linebacker's mentality at the defensive coordinator position because they're so committed in the defensive front and they obviously have Chris Kacarek there as the rush over coverage apparatus works. But the fact that the defensive coordinator had historically come from a linebacker's background, Robert Sala had been a linebacker's coach in the past and D'Amico Ryans had obviously been an all pro linebacker before he was a linebacker's coach. I think that that helped tie the whole defense together. So when you look at who might be the next defensive coordinator, the high profile candidates are the ones that everybody's trying to talk about right now on social media. Bill Belichick, one of the greatest defensive minds of all time, one of the greatest head coaches of all time. He's currently without a job. Pete Carroll, another great defensive mind who's actually been defensive coordinator for the 49ers before 1995 and 1996. He currently doesn't have a head coaching job because the Seattle Seahawks have gone elsewhere with their head coaching job. He's still aboard, I think, as a consultant with Seattle. But people are going to talk about Pete Carroll because of the history, and not just because of the fact that he's from the Bay Area, College of Marin for Pete Carroll, followed by University of the Pacific. He went to Redwood High School in Larkspur, was actually classmates with, with Robin Williams, both there and at the College of Marin. But people are going to talk about the fact that this 49ers regime with Kyle Shanahan actually modeled its initial defense in 2017 after the Pete Carroll Seattle style defenses, which is a connection that was made by Robert Sala, who was an assistant for Pete Carroll in Seattle. And then Robert Sala went with Gus Bradley to Jacksonville. And then Robert Sala went to San Francisco where he implemented the Seattle style 4-3 defense. It's a big reason why the 49ers signed Richard Sherman in 2018, right? But the crazy thing is that even though that would bring everything full circle, over the course of the past seven years, the 49ers defense has evolved. The old Seattle-style cover three is not something that works in the league anymore. You have to be more complex on the back end. You have to run more man coverage. You have to run more disguises because the the league, this is a chess match kind of league. The league is always going to be trying to make a counter move to your move. So that's one of the reasons why the 49ers decided to sign this man. This is why they went with Steve Wilkes, because they felt that he was going to be able to bring new ideas and new oxygen to their secondary. That being said, as you can tell, the 49ers defense 
was not bad in any of the years prior to this number prior to this 2023 season ever since they got good in 2019 with the addition of Nick Bosa and company the worst year had been 2021 where they ranked number 13 but they actually finished that season down the stretch as about the number five or the number six rated defense the Miko Ryans made them better over the course of the year especially as he got used to being a defensive coordinator so the defense wasn't bad. They're number one in 2022, Ryan's second year. And by 2023, the expectation was that they were going to be able to maintain that number one ranking or at least stay close to it, even with D'Amico Ryan's gone. And the way that they thought they'd do that while also evolving with the times in the league, they thought they'd bring in a DB mind to be able to diversify the coverages in the back end and force him to integrate with the current system. So they didn't let Steve Wilkes bring any of his assistants with him, for example. That's not very usual. Normally, you would allow a new coordinator to bring his assistants. They didn't allow that. They thought that they could take the best of both worlds. If you want to say they thought they could have their cake and eat it too, you might be right. It didn't end up working out that way, though, because the run defense tumbled to number 26. I thought they used Fred Warner too aggressively in downfield coverage to the point where Warner turned into not just cover first, but almost exclusively cover in some situations. And you would see him 20, 30 yards downfield with tight ends occasionally, even with receivers, not saying that Fred Warner can't do that. Obviously he's the best linebacker in football, but there was a decided back off of the emphasis against the run. And for the defensive line, it's all about stop the run and have some fun, right? They need to stop the run so that they can pin their ears back and get after the quarterback. When the emphasis from the linebacker level with Steve Wilkes was not as much on stopping the run, all of a sudden the defensive line was philosophically out of place. The defense ranked number 26 against the run. I wrote about this back in week six when they lost to the Browns. The Browns are able to run on the 49ers, and I said, you know, this is a problem. The run defense has to get better. It didn't. It finished ranked number 26 in the NFL. It was a huge issue against both the Green Bay Packers and the Detroit Lions. It was a little bit of an issue against the Chiefs, not as big of, of one. And, you know, I will say that the defense under Steve Wilkes, and you got to give him credit for a couple things. A, he got the best out of Charvarius Ward and Diomedo Lenore, two defensive backs. That's great. And B, he did get their best performance over the first half plus of the game against the Kansas City Chiefs. But it also wasn't a good finish for the 49ers defense in the Super Bowl against the Chiefs. So for all that that hot start was, the, the finish was not good. And Patrick Mahomes, I mean, it frustrated Kyle Shanahan so much. There was a play call he didn't agree with. It forced him to burn a timeout and uh, tell Steve Wilkes what the hell's going on. I mean, he was he was cursing on the sideline, Kyle Shanahan was. Might have been a zero blitz call coming that Kyle Shanahan didn't like. I mean, he publicly rebuked Wilkes. After the Minnesota game on the cover zero call before halftime that led to a touchdown that lost the game for, 40, for the 49ers, he moved Wilkes down from the booth to the sideline over the course of the bye week. He and then and then this that there was a rebuke during the Super Bowl uh, from Kyle Shanahan during the actual game when he called a timeout. So just uh, didn't seem to be a good fit. They liked what Steve Wilkes brought as a man. They liked some of the new coverage combinations. There were high points. There was the game against Jacksonville where they roared coming out of the bye week. But I do think that Kyle Shanahan probably added some of his input into the defense over the bye week. We saw those five-man fronts they came out with against Jacksonville to stop the run that they hadn't been able to stop in the weeks prior. So it, it definitely just did, never vibed right. We covered it at the time. We talked about all that at the time. And now the 49ers you know, are in a situation in the media cycle where people are talking about Bill Belichick, Pete Carroll, Brandon Staley, also on the list that I put up there. Brandon Staley is the former Chargers head coach. But you know that tenure wasn't good. And I don't know if the Joey Bosa is the biggest fan of Brandon Staley. I know Sebastian Joseph Day might be, but he was only under... Well, Sebastian Joseph Day actually may be under contract for next season with the 49ers too. Yeah, they got him with what I think is still a year left of his contract. So Sebastian Joseph day would be a guy that's a bigger Brandon Staley fan. I would say that Staley would completely change the DNA of this defense. It probably would move to a three, four and Staley had been with the Rams before the chargers. And he had actually coordinated a number one ranked Rams defense prior to his 
time with the Chargers. So, you know, he's a defensive coordinator with pedigree. And if everybody's on the table, then we have to name some of these high profile candidates. There's Mike Vrabel and Chris Harris. Vrabel, obviously the former head coach of the Tennessee Titans. And uh, Chris Harris, actually, this is somebody the 49ers have been interested in the past. He's a a defensive backs coach right now. He's a secondary coach for Tennessee, was under Mike Vrabel previously. For somebody like Carroll, for somebody like Bill Belichick, it's highly, highly unlikely just because of the fact that these guys would have to take a demotion. They would have to work under a coach, even though they've won Super Bowls in the past as head coaches, which I think would make it a rather unprecedented move. You could see something of this sorts from this list happening more likely for somebody like Brandon Staley or Mike Vrabel because, I mean, even though these guys have been head coaches in the past, they haven't won a Super Bowl yet, and that changes the pecking order a little bit. You can also look at the 49ers' in-house candidates, somebody like Daniel Bullocks, who's their current secondary coach, somebody like Johnny Holland, who's their current linebackers coach, but he's been dealing with the multiple myeloma treatment. You have to remember that. And then Chris Kacarek, the defensive line coach, although it seemed that Kyle Shanahan, and this is something that we've learned about Chris over the years, and Kyle Shanahan has talked about it a lot, uh, that Chris Kacarek seems really happy being a defensive line coach. I don't think he necessarily wants to oversee the whole thing. He likes being a fiery defensive line coach. So I don't know if that's too much of an option. Nick Sorensen on the 49ers staff, who's been, he's, they call him the ball father because he directs these special teams meetings every week or not, not that he does direct some special team stuff, but he's not the official special teams coach. He has been a special teams coach. He directs the turnover, the takeaway giveaway meetings. So they call him the ball father. Everything's about the ball. He looks at different clips from around the league and from 49ers games of giveaways and takeaways. And then, they credit Nick Sorensen with being well, the guy on the coaching staff that has probably most helped them be at or near the top of turnover margin in the league over the past two seasons, which is a big, big deal. That's helped the 49ers be very successful over the course of the past two seasons. So those would be the internal candidates. I just think that you know when you look at the history of what has worked, especially considering the fact that the 49ers – just parted ways with something that hasn't been working in Steve Wilkes. I think that it's really hard to look at some of these high-profile names like Belichick and Brandon Staley and say, oh, Kyle Shanahan would be excited about that because he today literally said, I want to keep things the same as what we've been doing. And that was the pre-Wilkes era. Rush over coverage. And I look here, Bill Belichick is a coverage over rush kind of guy. Brandon Staley, he's a 3-4 guy. He's not a 4-3 guy. So that would take a big, big change of philosophy. Might might be a big reason why they didn't hire Vic Fangio last year because Vic Fangio would have wanted to run the 3-4 instead of the 4-3. And Nick Bosa is going to have a lot of say in things. Nick Bosa is not going to want to play outside linebacker. He's going to want to put his hand in the dirt as a 4-3 defensive end. And, you know, Mike Vrabel with the Titans – I think that he'd be a little bit more linebacker, defensive line oriented just because of his history as a player. But he does also come from the Belichick tree as far as playing for Bill Belichick. So there would be a chance that that he wouldn't be exactly what Kyle Shanahan wants philosophically. That being said, Shanahan did say that he's open to anything. So if somebody like Bill Belichick is available and wants to come in the unlikely event that he decides to take a step away from being the man, he's okay with being just a defensive coordinator. And then he thinks maybe about his future and he sees San Francisco's talented offensive staff and he sees a potential future offensive coordinator that he can poach from the 49ers staff if he becomes a head coach later. If that happens with somebody like Bill Belichick or even with somebody like Pete Carroll, then I think there, you know, and I think Belichick would be the main one, not, not Pete Carroll, but I think that there would be some willingness from the 49ers and Shanahan to be a little bit more flexible just in deference of who they bring in. But I think that based on what Shanahan has been saying, he doesn't want to bring in a veteran. He'll explore that idea and and he'll probably put out calls to all of these guys. But I I think you'd rather bring in somebody who has approached the game the same way that 49ers defensive coordinators, Robert Sala and D'Amico Ryan's approach the game to be able to get this defense back to what 
earned its reputation as one of the top units in the league. And for that, I go back to their performance over the course of this regime. And the best year, obviously 27 and 2018, they weren't good. And they picked up Bosa and company. They turned the corner in 2019. That was the best year. That was under Robert Sala. And then you had another really good year in 2022 under D'Amico Ryans. You obviously had injuries in 2020 and 2021. It was a tough year, but they finished strong. And it's always been a rush over coverage unit in its best years. I would say that they've gotten a little bit more diversified over time. And then Steve Wilkes came in and tried to change a whole heck of a lot. He was trying to really, really emphasize that pass coverage. But the, the, the best coordinating performances have come when the 49ers have really been able to bind things together defensively. 2022 and 2019 with coordinators who had linebacker coaching experience. 2019 was Sala as that linebacker's coach and then the linebacker himself in that 2022 season with D'Amico Ryans. For that reason, my dark horse candidate is Aaron Curry. He currently is the inside linebacker's coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's only 37 years old. But this is a guy, and I was just looking through coaches in the league, and there's going to be a lot of dark horse names until Kyle Shanahan narrows this down. So I'm not going to sit here and for 30 minutes and just list names. But you know, even if it's not Aaron Curry, look for this type of prototype if the 49ers are starting to search less experienced candidates and going back to the Robert Sala, D'Amico Ryan's playbook. Because Curry is a former linebacker. He's an inside linebacker's coach now, so that's right at the middle of the defense. That's in between the defensive line and the secondary. And he has played under and coached under Pete Carroll. So you look at the higher profile names and you see Carroll on there. And yes, he, he runs the system the 49ers first adopted, but it's evolved since then. And I think that Kyle Shanahan might want to go for some younger blood anyway. And I think that somebody who would understand the Carroll principles, but also understand the changing dynamic of the game would be a younger coach like an Aaron Curry, who's 37 and is currently coaching the interior linebackers at a place like Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh's had a solid defense year in, year out. I think they've finally started to, to regress a bit, but that used to be one of their calling cards under Mike Tomlin. But I do think that somebody like Aaron Curry could give the 49ers a potential infusion of freshness. I don't know if they're going to go that direction. I don't know if they're going to go to somebody similar. They haven't narrowed it down at all yet, but just be cognizant of the names that are on the table of the name that I think could be a sleeper and stay smart about it because I think the 49ers have a lot of work in front of them considering the fact that Shanahan just made the decision to part ways with Steve Wilkes today. Again, it comes down to this. The defense was over a field goal worse in terms of expected points since the number one unit in 2022. So no, Steve Wilkes was not scapegoated. That is the most ridiculous narrative out there. I think that the division and opinion here online lies between people who actually watch the 49ers this year and people from the national media parachuting in just to have a take. Yes, the 49ers defense played well, especially before Dre Greenlaw got hurt against the Chiefs. But ultimately, it didn't play well enough. Ultimately, it played poorly enough and was aligned poorly enough to cause Kyle Shanahan to take a timeout and disgust. That was overtime. And this is not a single game decision. They didn't sit here and decide to fire Steve Wilkes because of only the Super Bowl. They decided to do this because the defense has tangibly regressed over the course of this past year from number one down to number 12 with perhaps greater talent with Chase Young on this football team. The 49ers thought that, wait, this defense shouldn't be dropping over 3.5 points per game from number one to number 12. In any job, especially in the NFL, if there is regression, there probably is going to be a change in leadership. And that's exactly what we saw here with Steve Wilkes. Now we get to wait to see who that 49ers next defensive coordinator might be. All right. That's the quick video. Thank you everybody for joining. We will talk to you very soon.